Mugs are hot, three, two, one. <laughs> well, you see, that flea, Pee Wee, is me. <laughs> There we go. Hey, welcome to Girl Man Record Night, folks. This is a regular old Friday night. This is what we do on a regular old Friday night. We get together, we listen to records, we talk about it, have a little soda pop, potato chips, a fellowship, and we've been doing it all crazy. Some shit's been happening on Saturdays, and we've been taking time off and moving around. Just, and just regular. Do it, do it when we do it. Well, hey, man, tonight's regular old Friday night. Cameraman's in town. Cameraman's in town. Kerbis is in the house. The Kerbis is in the house, who may or may not have bought a wrestling mask off of eBay this week. Hey, don't give it away. I mean, we'll, was we'll, it worn by mankind? We'll get into that a little a little later. Uh, but uh, it's good to be back. Reg regular business. I, you know, no weird shit. Got to go to the record store today. Look at you. Uh, everything was just falling into place after a you know week of. Covering, uh, covering candidates and mm. different things and that's what heavy. have you. That's heavy, man. That's heavy business, and that's, that's so too heavy. That's why I like to get that heavy baloney off my shoulder come Friday evening. Mm. That's when we get in here and we do us a little, a little record program. And, good, boy, and boy, we sure do enjoy program. it, and it's we enjoy program. you joining us every Friday. Um, oh shit, I didn't pull up my my rundown. Oh, uh, who cares? Should I pull it up? I should I think, pull up my rundown. I think you probably should. It's a crutch. You probably won't look at it, but it's a crutch. No, I got some business. Nice to have it in front of you. I got some business written down on there. Um, you do? Yeah. So what's been going on this week? Did you get yourself I into a record know. store this week? I did. I I, I actually um, kind of bolted into one one day because there was something I needed to grab, and we'll talk about that later. Oh, you did pick something up? Yeah, it was one oh, okay. of those. Okay. One of those things I just. It shows the ugly side of your LP addiction. Yeah, that is that is nasty. That's, a, that's the best way I can describe it. And I will say, I'll I'll tease ahead. We're gonna do a little deep tease here. Um, coming up probably next week. I've scored a little nice stack of 45s. Uh, oh yeah. Courtesy of my mom. We're gonna talk about those. No. And oh, there's some uh, there's some good stuff in there. And uh, I found out even more than I thought. One of the albums is worth quite a it's bit of money. Al it's not an album. Well, one of the singles is worth quite a bit of money. And I'm really stoked to... Uh, he loves to talk about money on Oh, my God. I love it. Money. I think Andrew Kramer is standing money, right money, off the set. Money, money, That's how they sound. You, get, you guys ever heard a rock and roll song? That's how they sound. Right there. I did it. Okay. So, let me tell you. This is something I want to do... Um, Something I wanted to mention last week, uh, but I forgot when we were talking about shit that was in the news. And it brings to, uh, brings to mind a very um, important point I think I want to make here. I'm going to get serious for a few minutes. No, uh, for the first time, I don't know if you guys are fans of My Bloody Valentine, but uh, they've announced that they're going to repress their, um, their vinyl catalog, their catalog on vinyl, and it's going to be cut from the analog masters. It's going to be a big deal. Because uh, Loveless by My Bloody Valentine is one of the best alt-rock, noisy side of alt-rock I've ever heard. Um, I have to admit I don't really don't know anything about these guys. It's phenomenal. Cameraman, you like, uh, is it like a Sonic Youth kind of thing? Or? Close. Okay. I, I wouldn't, yeah. I mean, it's not too far from there. But uh, Cameraman and I, when we, very early on when we uh, moved away to college, um, Ran into a friend. Actually, he went to our high school, but I, I didn't personally didn't hang out with him much then. But he was a big My Bloody Valentine fan, and I didn't really know shit about him. And he really turned us on to it and uh, started listening to it, and I was, I was blown away. And then, then as I become uh, older, and I'm like, oh, that'd be a cool record to pick up. And you go look for it, and it's like, I mean, a couple hundred bucks. Easy. Really? 
And uh, so and that's one of those bands. There's a few of those bands like that that, that come to mind. Um, uh, Melvin's, mm -hmm. a lot of the Melvin's original stuff, 200 buck plus. Uh, Boards of Canada, before they re-released their shit, 200 plus bucks. Easy. Yeah, so um, so this has been one of those situations. And so this, the shit's finally going to get released, and apparently it's going to be like really nice sounding stuff. Um, very legit uh, rock album that needs to be out there. At a nice price. At a nice price. At hopefully, a nice price. Hopefully. Uh, we thought two, that it won't be 200 bucks. No, it won't be 200 bucks, but I was stoked when they said they were going to repress uh, Division Bell and it's yeah. like, oh, special deluxe edition, $40. And I'm like, yeah, I'll, I'd love to have the Division Bell. It's not my favorite Floyd, but. Far from. But uh, I'm not going to pay $40 for it either. I don't own any faux Floyd on vinyl. But it's funny I mentioned this is kind of an aside here. But at that same time in my life, uh, this first couple of years of college, mm -hmm. Obviously, very important, very important musically. Uh, not only did I hear Mob Boy Valentine, but um, first discovered Boards of Canada, Aphex Bird. Twin, pretty much any uh, ambient type music, first discovered. Also, for the first time, heard uh, Mr. Bungle, which was legendary. This is all pretty much a camera at the same time. I mean, it, the first time I heard Mr. Bungle, it's when you get to college, you start, you this know. This is the first time you heard Mr. Cameraman? It, it, experimenting with, uh, you know, life and whatnot. Right. And you put on a Mr. Bungle album after that, and it, uh, it has never You're left me. Bungle or Bunghole? Bungle. Okay. Mr. Bungle. Um, Just checking. But yeah, anyhow, so this has been released, um, or it's, it's going to be released, been announced. So this this is the question, and the question of the evening. Here. Oh, there's a question. Yes, I got a question of the evening. Let me be make a graphic. Real I'm quick. not prepared for questions. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make a graphic. I'm banking it. I'm coloring it. Um, for albums like this in the past, because one of the only ways you could really enjoy the Mob Lady Valentine Loveless album up until recent now, pay the huge amount, or there was some bootlegs out there, and I don't know what necessarily each bootleg where it was sourced from. Some was from like the CD or what, what whatever, um, and they looked nice, and they were they were records. It was a record, but it was a bootleg. Bootleg. Tools the same way. There's some albums with Tool that are not pressed on vinyl, like originally. You can't even go buy the way over expensive originals. They just were never pressed on vinyl. But you know those bootlegs and bootlegs. Those desert sessions, like, like you got. Like two records and shit. Yeah. That that uh, desert sessions you got. Yeah. Bootleg City. Right. So it's like. Uh, they never came out that way. They just came out as CDs, but then they combined them together, I guess, on yours. It's like one and two, one I think. One and two on the one yeah, yeah, and pressed them on, on the vinyl. On vinyl. And yeah. it's, it's, it's a bootleg. Um, Melvin's same way. And there's a lot of this stuff, and some of them sound way better than others. I've got an old Floyd that's like a... When they did that show at the London Underground, and John Lennon was there, and met Yoko, and yeah. was, but that part of that show is recorded. It's, on, it's a bootleg. And it's, it sounds terrible. I mean, the, the quality is really See, bad. I, I think in the, the more classic rock sense, sense of things, I think the term bootleg was much more used interchangeably for live recordings made at the shows right. with, without necessarily getting the approval of the band or the management company or whatever. Well, and those nowadays, things floated out there. Nowadays, there are, there are official bootlegs and stuff. Yeah. Even. Uh, what is it's that? Like, well, like some King Crimson stuff or maybe... Even, um, when they finally endorsed it after years and realized it was decent, like that Les Claypool release, there's a there's a bootleg version. Yeah. That, you know, but whatever you're just you're releasing it. How bootleg is that? But in the record kind of terms of for record collectors, I think in modern times, bootleg has become not just some live recording somebody threw a mic down, but they're bootlegs of albums that are not available on vinyl or they're available but they're two hundred freaking dollars. Right. That's become more of the thing. Are there records out there? This is my question. Oh, is there, there, yeah, there was a question. Are there records out there that you go buy the bootlegs because you can't afford the originals or that it's something that's not pressed on vinyl? Do you buy those? Tool, Caller, uh, call what was the question? Anima, for example. Is, uh, I don't think it was ever originally pressed on vinyl. Mm. But it's uh, the question again? But it's out there in a bootleg form. Do you buy that just because it's a record? If you're a true collector and of a certain band, I think you probably would. I don't know. I, I'm just throwing it out because I've always been kind of divided like, on that. Recently, at Underdog, 
our, one of our good holes. There's a lot of Fleetwood Mac stuff that's, there's a few bootlegs in there. Yeah. And if you, I think if you were a true Fleetwood Mac, early, mid, and late, you would probably want to have this stuff, you know, just because it's, it's unattainable on a, on a grand scale. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I'm kind of, I'm, I'm kind of wishy-washy because, I mean, it'd be cool to, to own, like, big gatefolds of blah, blah, blah. But if it comes down to it, if the source material on the record is just somebody ripping off an MP3 or oh, well, taking a... Yeah, I was I'm thinking going, more live recordings and stuff. Yeah, see, that's what I'm saying. In the classic rock sense yeah, of things, it's yeah. more like live recording. Right, that's what I'm saying. Modern day, it's like... Anybody can make a record. It's anybody too can make a expensive. Record. Yeah. So, I, I don't know. I don't know what I do. I've never... I don't I think I own any bootlegs at all um, on vinyl. So... Um, I don't know. I, I gotta, I, obviously, I've not taken the plunge on things that I was scared of paying the money for. Practice the Donald Trump. Like, I'll just be that guy because I sit here while you talk and I do the. And do this. Um, it's like the handle YouTube, the little hand that scrolls across. <sighs> Borst. Mm. Anywho. Okay. So that was my big question about. Uh, so think about it. Leave it. Leave us. Uh, Leave us your thoughts about bootlegs in the comments. Do you maybe, uh, maybe three paragraphs? You buy shit that's too expensive, or do you buy like old school like bootleg? Three written paragraphs, single space, submit. Courier is uh, really the industry standard if we want to get down to like scripts. Hey, I tell you what. When we talk about what we played this evening, we played a pretty. Are you got anything that you want to say before we do that, Steve? No, I don't think so. Are you sure? I don't know. Is there something I was supposed to say? Oh, should we do the uh, the pictures you sent? Or you got enough different time for that? I'm trying to think what pictures you sent. We should probably talk about that right now. Okay, well, let's That's talk about deal. it. That's a big deal. Which one do you want to see I mean, first? Uh, it doesn't matter. I think probably the, the that one. This the one? left one, yeah. Okay. Uh, All right, hold so, it. So, hold on a second. Okay. Let's talk about let's talk, talk, premise this. Premise it. Uh, I was watching the news this morning, because that's what I have to do, and I tease the news, and going through the show and w there's like constant weather cut-ins because that's what people tune in to watch morning weather sure and the meteorologist was talking about um julia it's a tropical storm julia i think it basically came because north carolina gets a lot of hurricane action because we, we stick our asses out there you know and into that alley and it just either comes up and hits the florida area or it comes up and hits our area and but there's this Julia kind of came up and got pushed away. But right behind Julia is right. another, what well, was a tropical depression. Now it's a tropical storm. And following Julia is Carl. It's now a tropical storm. It's tropical storm Carl. So if you want to okay. pop up, I don't know. I don't have any information on tropical storm. Okay. But we do know the National Weather Service has uh, issued some information mm. with a five-day forecast on the projected uh, path of Carl. Okay. I don't know if he's coming. Okay, let's take a look here. But he could. Carl, yeah. Carl could make an impact. Carl could make an impact right in our back door. I went to, I went to our meteorologist after the show. Right. And I asked her, I said, if you could work the word envelope into your broadcast, into your forecast, I will buy you the biggest latte you've ever seen. She was a bit puzzled by that. Hmm. But we shall see. But we'll keep an eye out. I'm still going to try to get the envelope brought into the... What if, what if it becomes Hurricane Carl? I like tropical depression, Carl. <laughs> and I told Steve I've never seen Carl depressed in my life, so that would be very that would be a very tough one to pull off. Carl's one of the most positive cats ever. Yeah, for sure. Always mellow, man. That's cool, man. Always mellow. That's cool. All right, let's talk about what we played. We got a lot of shit. So to that get was through. our that was our weather update. Yeah, well, I just need to make a weather graphic. We don't talk, to, we don't talk the, about weather. I went to the meteorology school, you know. You did. You I went didn't to finish. UNCA? Nope. I thought you went to UNCA. I got accepted there. That's in Asheville, by the way, which uh -huh. would have been a really good town to be in. I think Asheville's a great town. We're I not. don't know if it was that cool, man. 
it's it's the, it's the probably town always itself's always been pretty well. I got a lot of room over here. Look at all this. Yeah, exclaim. We're the whiters. I didn't know we were doing all that. Oh, it's it's curtain to curtain. As long as we clip the curtain, that's where I'm at. I always clip the curtain. So what do we play tonight? Rock and roll music, Steve. Rock and roll music. I started out with just some dick dragon rock and roll music. I'm shooting fire out of my wiener hole because I'm a dick <laughs> dragon. Um, copyright 2016 Mikey Bananas. Don't try it, Dick Dragon. Uh, Between the Buried and Me, the Silent Circus. Woo! Started out out of the gate swinging. And when I say swinging, I mean swinging everything we got Anderson with it. Swinging? I mean, we're swinging. Um, What's, uh, what's going on? Yeah, it's. Uh, the what a killer album, man. That shit is... Who's um, the drummer for this band? Oh, I can't remember his name. Very, if you don't know these guys... Is he not from around here? Yeah, this whole group is from around here, Thank you. actually. They're all from North Carolina. Uh, my son knows the drummer, I think. Yeah, the uh, one of the guitar players, um, uh, the guitar player in the band I was in, owns his PRS. Okay. Came through and he bought it from him. They actually signed a little paper that said, I played this guitar on this album and this uh, this uh, tour or whatever. Sweet. Hey, would you turn that down a little bit? In the headphone jack. Mm -hmm. Or both if it's blowing up that much. It might be blowing it up. Oh. Cool. But uh, yeah, man, I just wanted to start right out of the gate with some just thunder. Mm -hmm. Thunder. Mm -hmm. Um. And then I decided to bring it a little it's a down. It's a pretty record, too. Yeah, it's a very, very pretty record. I decided to bring it down a little bit with some uh, Jay Dilla, man. Bring it down. Some of the best hip hop you can down. get on this mug. Donuts? Um, JD Donuts. Dang. One of the, the best, the best hip hop producers of all time. You know, tell me the story. This guy was in the bed, like, yes. dying and shit. He was in the bed. His mom brought him his. His mom would bring him 45s and a sampler, and he's sitting in his hospital bed making beats, because that's, uh, that's what you got to do, man. Wow. And, uh, yeah, he's, he's no longer with us. He's yeah, dead. Yeah, he passed on. Uh, and, uh, but he leaves a legacy of great beats and great uh, hip-hop behind. And I inadvertently said great, which is going to make you me know sound the really executive racist. Producer, the executive producer of this album? Kanye West. Which big? Peanut Butter Wolf. Oh, Peanut Butter Wolf is the man. Is he? I oh, love yeah. peanut butter. I had, He's, a, uh, I had a peanut butter and jelly sandwich this morning. Kind of a dark complexion white guy. Okay. So he, he looks he looks creamy like peanut butter. He's the one that runs Stone's. I like, crun I like crunchy. He runs Stone's Throw Records. Okay. Moving there's on. A, yeah, there's a great documentary about that if you don't know that. Sidewinder, Lee Morgan. Oh, wait. What label's that on? How about Buck, 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 Bayou? I live in the buck, 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 buck bayou. Oh, well, Lee Morgan Sidewinder doesn't never hurt anybody, except it got a little skip at the end of that side we played. That's all right. I know it's coming. As long as I know it's coming, uh, that's all that really matters. That means your memory still works. That's good. My memories are pretty good, too. <laughs> um, I pulled out a little VCLT. Oh, I don't have my graphic loaded in. That's okay. Whoa. Look, oh, no. They're, are they the cutting VCLT that guy open? Guy. Uh, it's a, oh, he's got. Cracker. We're watching. Tonight backyard we're watching wrestling. damn backyard wrestling, which is pretty but, pretty I heinous. Mask on eBay. Bunch of idiots. <laughs> uh, a little VCLT for my buddy John up in New York. Um, not John Nine on YouTube. The Tembrona Nader. Uh, Cunning stunts from Caravan. Mm -hmm. uh, terrific record. Seventy five BTM records. Um, I hadn't pulled this out in a while, and I was like, oh, damn it, man. Yeah, we they, were, they were still good into their mid-70s, so yeah. I'll, yeah, I'll absolutely. Credit. I love Caravan. A little Canterbury business. Love it. Oh, and Jay, Jay said, I won't play a record. Jay said, I won't play a record. Hey, John Coltrane. I won't play a record. He said, this is a record Jay wanted to play. Jay, why don't you tell us about it? Get on the microphone and tell us about it. Get on the mic. Get, get, get on, on the, the mic. mic. Get, get on, get on, on the, the mic. mic. So Mikey the, Mike. The cult choice of weapon. I'm going to see the cult this week. Oh, you're Jay's going to see, going to see the cult. I'm going to see the cult again. 
Where do you see in the cult this week? show in Charlotte, North Carolina. Okay. I think, which bathroom are you going to pee in uh, there, Jay? That's right. It originated in Charlotte. Nope. It all happened. That's where it all yeah. went down. No, we're starting over. Three, right. two, let me hit the stop. I'll take it back if you take it back. I'll take it back if you take it back. No, I'll take it back if you take it back. I tell you, I think Jay is the cold-blooded sausage I maker. think I saw the cult in the 80s, but I don't quite remember. Yeah? Yeah, I think I did. But I don't quite... I, I don't quite remember that part of my life. I remember that 80s better not do anything, obviously. Which is why I collect Nintendo cartridges, because, uh, you know. Because you remember so much. Oh, man. Oh. That, was, that ah, looks so delicious. I've been trying to pull this mug out for a couple weeks now. Little T-Bone Walker, very rare. One of the best, it's a live album on uh, Reprise. 73, and uh, one of the best gatefolds. Jay, pull that out and pull that gatefold out. Best gatefold. I mean, this thing is just mouth-watering. Rarely do I get to say that a record album. It is. I was getting Turn really it the other side, It looks Jay. delicious. Okay, flip the gatefold out on the other side. Um, now open it. Other way. Ooh, flip it around. Go. Jay? Come on, Jay. Now let the record fall. Don't let it fall out. <laughs> there you go. Mm. Now that's what you call a mouth-watering gatefold, folks. That's what she said. That's incredible, right there. And normally I play mm. with the Wilbert Longmire that's got the uh, eggs on the front, so we got some little steak and eggs. But uh, I didn't do that this time. No. No. But it's a, a fantastic T-Bone Walker record, and I uh, don't play it near enough here on the program. Steve, you brought a record album over that we listened to on my record player. We did. Earlier. This is the 2013, I think, reissue of Noi. I remember this came out. Is that new or this Noi? Is Noi? Noi from 1971. Uh, Krautrock. A couple members of, of Kraftwerk. Uh, Kraftwerk. Kraftwerk. Left Kraftwerk. I think that was a percussionist and maybe somebody else. I've passed on this on oh, clearance, so the reissue. It's so good. And I should have totally bought it. Noi 2 is good, but this is even better. This is the first one. And uh, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a legend of, of that genre. Yeah. It's fantastic business, for sure. I'm happy. And I, I really wish I would have delved more into that. I wish I could have passed on it so many times. Albert Collins, Cold Snap. Woo! Man, does this shit smoke or what? Uh, 86, Alligator Records out of Ch -ch 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 Chicago, I believe. Um, yeah, Sh Alligator Records out of Chicago. And boy, he... Yeah, Alligator's definitely Chicago. He smokes on this record. Um, man, the whole thing's good. Uh, and this is, this is one of the later pickups. I got it like last year, I believe. That has got Girl Man Record Night written owl over it. Who? Right. Owl over it. Who? Well, next, this has got Grown Man Record Night written all over yeah, it Yeah, and well. you started playing a couple of track-offs. I think it'll be a track-off. Yeah, that's where we started tracking it off. Yeah. Don't track off all over the carpet. I had a, a fix. I really wanted to hear some Jimmy Smith because I was, I think I talked about it last week. Gene Simmons mentioned in his interview with Dan Rather that he really loved jazz and grew up listening to jazz and uh -huh. had jazz records and loved Jimmy Smith and I love Jimmy Smith and sure. I, probably, I, Jimmy I have Smith? as many Jimmy Smith records of, as I have as anybody else. What is this, Russia? This is uh, Bashin. It's on the Verve from 63, I mm -hmm. believe. Yeah, I got this one. It's a mono press and quality. it's uh, quality and it was a good mix straight out of the Chicago Blues because it had the same thing going on with the organ. Oh yeah, you so. can go right over with that. So it was a nice toss over. Yeah, uh, I, I said, man, you got to bust this one out. This oh, was, this was good. This was some VCLT the, from uh, our good buddy Sean. Bell and James. Um, and look at the title of that mug right there. It's all about it. Should be our theme song. It's, it's our, but should be they our damn theme us, song. They won't give us the rights. No. Living it up Friday night. Friday night. And the lyrics are just solid right on what we're doing. Next, I wanted to hear some Beatles. Um, because the Beatles? To, not, today is, is that the, a new band, to, today Steve? Is, <laughs> today is the release of the Beatles documentary that Ron Howard put together. So I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing that. It's about Opie getting stoned for the first time. But more interestingly, uh, tomorrow night, Saturday in L.A. at the El Rey Theater in Wil on Wilshire Boulevard, uh, is uh, a show, basically, of about 40 uh, musicians put, playing Beatles songs. 
And Adrian Ballou is, is today was flying out to L.A. to play with the Paul McCartney band. Wow. They're playing six songs. That'd be cool to hear. That would be great to hear. And you know, Has he jammed with McCartney before? I don't know, but you know, I think, I think when he was in Covington, he was in a Beatles tribute band. Huh. Or, or, early in his, his, uh, his, uh, his time. <laughs> would you say John Bon Jovi's playing Hey Jude? Yeah. No, you're not. He's, he's not doing that. Um, audio uh, Adrian Blue is going to play with with Paul the Paul band the Paul McCartney band. She loves you, all my loving. Uh, she's a woman, no reply. Good day, sunshine, and I'm only sleeping. How uh, am I loving? The, the the documentary is about the touring years, so you're not going to get the late studio stuff. But right, um, I would that would be so cool to hear. Oh, I'd love to hear that. So cool. Because let me tell you what, man, that, that last McCartney album was killer. So I followed that with, let's stay in the world of Lennon and McCartney. This is uh, Claypool and Lennon um, Delirium. This is only a few weeks it's, old. Yeah, right? I brought it last week, and um, I think we played maybe one of the sides or two of the sides. We did, so I've heard... We went off the air, and I think I played the whole fucking album. But, um, is it a double LP? It's, a, it's double LP, but okay, there well, aren't many songs on each. I've so. heard two sides so far. Yeah. I'm we listened very to, impressed. I think we listened to side three. It has, uh, we listened to America, which is like... Uh, it's, I mean, it's a space rock album. It's I, it's I'm, really cool. I'm really impressed with this. It's really really cool. It's got enough Claypool to, that you know it's Claypool, but it's right. like spacey and weird, and uh, it 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 fills a, a gap just perfectly. Speaking of going from gap and to that another gap word, is my butthole. Let's go from gap to zap. Oh, a little see? original zap album. From this is the first album, and we listened to that classic more bounce life. to the ounce in case you were wondering what it said with the vocoder oh yeah this is the best vocoder band <laughs> yeah oh totally thanks jay it's a fun record to put on if you want to kind of shake your rub labels messed up can i Warner get brothers fear me Zap was the one that all murdered off each other. Zap. Yeah, the guys... They murdered somebody, off each other? Well, the lead singer was shot and killed by a relative or a in-law relative. Or irrelative. Because guy, he kind of cut him out of the deal and said, well, I'll just shoot you then. Okay. I'll zap you. Okay. Well, that was all I put for my one-offs. That was it. Yeah, yeah. And then, uh, can you set that down there? Or I'll set it up here. I'll put it up here, Jay. You gonna I, post that? Uh, I wanted to. You gonna post that? Post what? My my one-off set. I so, can do you that. Know what you do? Sometimes. I put a uh, I put a record album on my turntable that I had before. Um, I bought it. I paid with my debit card at this record store, and they let me take it home after that. Then I came here to listen to it um, with everybody else in here, too. Um, Queens of the Stone Age, and it's the first one. I listened to the side. This is from 98 or 97. Um, and I just love this album. I've not heard it in a really long time, meaning in a few weeks. I played side one with regular John Avon, if only one. Um. <laughs> And uh, we all know the drill. Oh, that's is that the one that's got the pictures of the vaginas on it? No. No? Uh, X-rated. That's X-rated. Yeah, yeah. No vaginas. We don't show that. No. We did one, though. So that's what we played this evening, but I think that was a good, um, that was a nice little mix we did there. And everything kind of just, everything, it felt good. Everything kind of came together. I felt good about it. Yeah, man. Did we have some shots poured? <gasps> I'll cut the line. You cut the lawn, but you didn't pull the shot? I'll cut it. I'll get it. No, no, no. Let uh, Elizabeth do it. Oh, because I have a vagina. No, gladly. There's some cut already. There's three cut. You can pour you one. If you'll bring the other two. Let's make it happen. One, you get a line, now, get a pole, honey. All right. You get a line, now, get a pole, babe. You get a line, now, get a pole. I will go down the car that hole. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. All right. Well, um, man, what, what's your week been like in terms of digging, Steve? Are you, you're still digging? I'm on the tail end of, but you know what? These are actually not tail end. I actually went out and got some more stuff. Yeah. I was going to do some uh, 45s tonight. And I, I'm That's gonna what actually, I thought you were going to do. I'm going to save you, those. But you got some digs. I actually went out. You know, it's very rare. Um, 
things just work out and in my favor. <laughs> it's very rare things just work out in my favor. Um, so uh, today I actually had some time to go to the record store, spend some quality time looking through some shit I really wanted to look through because I had heard from Steve that there was some actually some... Uh, oh, God, so many good used records this guy got a hold of. Yeah, so it was like a situation. So we wanted to make sure you that... Pour you one? I don't know, I was too dumb for the bottle. Oh, oh, we not open? Too high for the bottle. Oh. Um, you got a shot? Glass? Glass of lean. So anyhow, I had to make sure. It was one of those rare days. I got to go in there and look around and do my old damn shit. I actually went to a couple Goodwills, Cam too. Cameraman? No. Sure? You don't want to shoot um, you sure? Squarebo. He's in it. So it was rare to be able to do some shit I wanted to do, hang out, blah, blah, blah. And so I've decided I'm going to show those records today. Okay. And I'll save the 45 for next week, which are no slouch of records. Hey, I've Let been tell saving you what. records over the past two months. So hey, you know um, that. my uncle passed away when he was really young. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Are we drinking That's to that? That's a true story. Yeah. My uncle, that's where I get my Blackhawks helicopter hat from my cancer uncle. I didn't know I not, no, I didn't know that. Cancer uncle. Cheers to cancer uncle. Cancer uncle? Hey, that's another nickname I could go Oh, Jesus Christ. Fuck. Uh, yeah. Uh, that tastes like uh Restylane or Tamoxifen. Mm. These chemotherapy jokes do anything for anybody? Oh, you, you mm. Wow. All right. Okay. That's good stuff. That's good. Smooth. So I'll do a couple right off the top here. <laughs> okay. Alcohol. Cool. Me too. Mm. Found this in a Goodwill today. And a, a few of these things I picked up uh, actually with a Goodwill gift card. My mom got me in uh, for Christmas, if you guys remember. I was shelving a bunch of records. If you notice, a lot of my, my records have been shelved, Steve. Oh, I like it. Yeah, and uh, as I was going through the records and shelving them, I found stuck to one of them, some bullshit record, and my mom picked it out to be a weirdo bullshit record on purpose, and stuck a Goodwill gift card to it. Well, I lost it, and then I was shelving records, and I found it. <laughs> I went around the lobster, and I never flounder. Um... So I found it and stuck it in my wobblet and uh, paid for some stuff today. Here's one of them. The George Sharing Trio featuring uh, Vernil Fournier on drums. The last recorded performances of the late great bassist Israel Crosby. I don't know any of those names. I'm not gonna... guy. So it's uh, 62, <laughs> I think it is. <laughs> What's my obvious, my obvious interjection? You said Israel Crosby and I said yeah. a Jewish guy. What was uh, that all about? Um, downbeat. Is it Downbeat Records? No, it's Capital. It's on so Capitol. I listened to some samples. I'll, I'll be honest, I cheated on this one. I listened to some YouTube clips. Um, I think, think Dave Brubeck, but kind of on a sedative. So it's decent piano jazz. There's some. Well, meat. he does admit it's downbeat. True. There's some meat in there, uh, but a lot of the tracks are fairly pedantic and uh, maybe down knee. slower and it's piano jazz like typical piano you got to be in the right mood for pi you're not yeah. going to put on piano jazz on friday night you might but put it on saturday afternoon it's maybe. but S sunday morning but for sure it's not just saying piano jazz it's it's not dave brubeck it's george shearing it's not bill evans it's george shearing and it's uh, um it's not even keith jarrett oh well pff, keith jarrett come on well, I'm just you're going, saying. You're going, you're going the wrong out there. You're going way out there. So it's, it's good. It was 75 cents. So it's definitely 75 cents good. But, eh, you okay. know what I mean. All right. Can we do one more? I'll do one. Okay. Uh, I got this compilation. We'll go one one. It's called The History of British Rock. Cool. And it's got a British looking flag on the cover. And the label itself looks kind of British. It's, a, it's really cool. It's on Immediate Records, and if you remember, Immediate Records is the same label that put out Small Faces, that uh, really good psych record, uh, the Ogden's yeah, Nut. Yeah. Ogden's Nut. You got a lot of comments on that Small Faces stuff. Yeah. 
I, I love uh, early British rock, and this has got Eric Clapton, Jimmy Page, and Eric Clapton, Rod Stewart, uh, early Rod Stewart, John Mayall, and Small Faces. It's got Fleetwood Mac on it, Savoy Brown, and wow. Crispin St. Peter's, and Nice. Crispin Glover. So it's a really nice compilation. Oh, it's got Nice on it, too. It's got Nice on it, too. Nice. And this is Creative Sounds Limited uh, label. Oh, I thought it was Immediate Records. Is this something you what picked up saying? in a record store it's, or it's, in it's, Vigit's Somehow spot. it's related to Immediate Records, I think. Yeah, licensed from Immediate Records, England. Um, where did I, no, it's one of those, one one of those the dig digging, spots? digging spots. That's yeah. even better. Even better. Okay, I, I'm going to throw another question out there. So I'm in a Goodwill uh, earlier this week. You need to put a lilt on it. Question. Thumbing through. Don't really uh -huh. see a whole lot of anything. Saw something that was cool and I looked at it and the record would look like if somebody wrote it on with a screwdriver. Eh. Uh, so I found something that's like, oh, it's a twist record uh, by the Candy Man. I see Candy My Man. My favorite like, dance of all time. I'm like, oh, is that is that Psyche? And I'm like, oh, the twist. No, it's a twist record. And, you know, this is my brain processing this. But I'm like, but that's cool. And I pick it up and I'm just kind of looking at it. And I'm like, maybe it's like uh, really early pressing. Or, you know, I'm just interested. And so I pull the record out or try to. And I can't. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. uh, so Why can't you? 62. It's 62. Glued to get the shut? Uh, on Diplomat Records. Oh, Lord. I think it's freaking sealed, man. Mother is still sealed. Still sealed. So my question, and then, now, I'm not a guy that goes out and buys Twist Records, for crying out loud. So my question is... Um, do you open it? No. Do you? Is that something you do? If you're out and you're in a Goodwill and you find something, they're like, oh, that's, you know... Like, for instance, I've got a, a, another album, a James Taylor album. A James Taylor album that I would probably never listen to otherwise, but it was sealed and it was like a buck, and I'm like, okay. You know. Do you, yeah, you buy it. What are you talking I'm about? I'm sure I could... How much was it? A dollar? What yeah. the fuck? Yeah. A sealed twist tracker from, from 1962, probably? That's what I'm saying. Is yeah, that something you guys do, even if it's a genre or yes. an album that you would never listen to? Or Yes, and then you call your mom and tell her what you did. Or put it on eBay and make ten times the money back. Two billion dollars. Because I saw near mint copies of this for ten, and that's not even sealed. Whatever. So if I wanted to get you rid of win. it, you win. You won the race today. So if I wanted to get rid of it, or do I open it and just see what it? That's one I probably wouldn't open because I really don't care what. It's, Let's open it. I don't care what it sounds like. I know what twist records sound like. But it may buy me a couple of hamburgers. But you don't want to be the guy that said, oh, I put my virgin ears on this album when it finally hit the needle on the... Uh, I, I kind of do, guy. or it could buy me two cheeseburgers when I lose my job eventually. It'll buy you at least a couple of $5 foot long or at uh, Harris Teeter. $5 foot long. All week long, Those man. subs, all week long. Yeah, I only got one of them. Hey, I got a, I a record I think you today. have. I want I wanted some tuna I got this Beach Boys album. Yeah, I got that one. It's a Pickwick. Is yours a Pickwick? Yeah, it's, I think. It's a decent, kind of a cool, weird compilation. I'm yeah, not it's quite sure. really what's, good. I'm not quite sure what's going on here, but I like it. Uh, I don't have a lot of Beach Boys, I, I, to be honest with you, on vinyl. I got a, I think all my Beach Boys albums are compilations, and this, as is this, I think. I don't know what's going on here, but uh, it's uh, Pickwick... Okay. It's just called the Beach Boys. Hey, I mean, <laughs> I'll be the first to admit, I love some Pickwick shit. I think there's some weird, not only some great compilations of songs put together, this but is some, some great cover art, too. This is from 1969. Dude, that Chuck Berry I have, or that's a Pickwick? Oh, my God. That's great funny. art on it, and some great songs that are, I don't know... Other albums that that shit is even. Hey, here's one I've never seen before. Okay. You know, in the when Jefferson Airplane would be getting their shit together, it took it took them a while to kind of get their shit together, and I think Paul Kantner and uh, Grace Slick would get kind of fed up with the fact that the band couldn't get it together to make another album. They were just kind of chomping at the bit. Maybe I'm bullshit and full yeah. of shit, but they would put together these. We'd get musicians together and, and put an album out. Mm -hmm. And I think I, the Sun Fighter, I think, is one yeah, of them. Yeah, and, and yeah, something. And, yeah. and Slick. And there's, and slick. And there's a bunch like of musicians like David Crosby and uh, maybe members of the Grateful Dead. And this one um, is called Baron Von Tollbooth and the Chrome Nun. <laughs> well, I've never seen this. No, I've never seen it before either. And it's, um, what do I know about it? 
What do you know about it? It's from 1973. It was issued the same time as 30 Seconds Over Winterland, which I have. I think you might have it. I have it. Um, I don't think I have that one. Jerry Garcia plays lead guitar on this album, as Whoa. well as the f bass player for the Flying Burrito Brothers is on here. Really? Um, yeah. It's... I, I've listened to it once and I thought it was pretty cool. It also has, uh, as well as Yorma Karkonen from, um, it also has the Pointer Sisters. What? Singing backup? I guess so. Wow. So what the hell? And this and, is a uh, Diggin' kind of Spot a record? Crazy. Yeah, Diggin' Spot record. Okay. Baron von Tolbooth and the Chrome Nun. So, uh, Dude, that's yeah. nuts. Though. I think it's a Grunt record, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, it's on oh, Grunt. Oh, cool. What was it Gray Slick, the Grunt record? Is that. Well, definitely Jefferson Airplane. About midway through their early career, they, they as a whole formed their own grunt record thing. Wow. They, they were grunting it. Yeah, I, I, I'd like to hear that. Hey, I picked this one up. This is another seventy-five $2. center. Two dollars, maybe. Seventy-five center today. A uh, little uh, swinging south. Les Paul and Mary Ford. I don't own any Les Paul and Mary Ford, and I definitely respect the shit of what they're doing. A little uh, Two Eye Columbia, and uh, look at that. Terrific shape. Oh yeah, sixty-two, or I, I believe it was. Uh, it's got ham and grits on it. I just don't understand. The guy. Man, let me tell you what. This husband and wife combo uh, was such a huge inspiration for how a lot of things are done, uh, and they're really known for like improvising. Uh, she's got a kick-ass looking SG. She's got. <laughs> yeah, she does. She's playing there, which is kind of ironic. Uh, I think Mary Ford playing an SG. But these guys are really known for improvising the recording gear in their garage studio. And overdubs. And, uh, and overdubs. Oh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. If, when, you th when you hear uh, Les Paul and Mary Ford, you definitely think overdubs. And I always harken back to that moment in, um, in uh, the Buddy Holly story, the movie. Where he said, uh, you know, he tells the guy in the studio, roll that back and uh, let me play alongside myself, blah, blah, blah. And he's like, where'd you learn about overdubbing? And he said, same place you did, old Les Paul. Mm -hmm. And I always think about that. And that's exactly right. I don't like garage type techniques, man. That's just uh, Lay it down. F and A, man. Roll tape, lay it down. Let's go. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. All right. You want one or you want me to do one? I'll do one. All right. I got a compilation that I keep seeing places, and I was like, you know what? This one's, I looked at the vinyl, and since the, the cover's really beaten, and usually you get a beat cover with these because they're so big and heavy over time. Is that a library record or something? It's a, it's a compilation uh, called Living in the Past. It's Jethro Tull, oh. I think 72, I think. I don't know what um, But it's got two records in it, and the, it, it's already fallen out. But I will say the vinyl's in really good shape on this one. So I, I really wanted to pick it up because um, it's on Chrysalis Records. Yeah. Uh, it's got a lot. One of the sides, I think, is live. But it's got some really, really good selections on it uh, over the early years of uh, a good prog band, Jethro Tull. Yeah. I like the Tull, man. Some people hate on them, but they got some jams. Somebody wrote all they're over not it. Always good, but they're not. They're always usually bad, they're either. usually pretty good, I yeah. think. And it's got that it's got that prog thing going on where they're kind of really into themselves about being prog. Yeah, or dude, whatever. I don't give a shit. Aqualung is one of the best classic rock songs. And speaking of Aqualung, I think um, on here rock, is bench. is a selection from Aqualung. I think it's uh, my prayer or what is it called? My Sharona? Not my Sharon. A uh, close. Close, but Bure's on here, which is an awesome uh, cover of a classic uh, British belt. song. He won the belt. Song for Jeffries on here. Uh, what else is on here that's just great? But this is, I was glad to pick this up. I'm not familiar with this album. Well, it, it's it's a good album, but like I say, it's a compilation. I think. Is that the first compilation of them? I don't know. What are you asking? Pop quiz, hot shot. <laughs> um, you know what I'm a sucker for? And I'll always pork be a skins. sucker for. Pork, pork skin. skins, numero uno. Numero dos is trucker country music compilations. 
anytime I see a record that's meant for like truck drivers and it's got that vibe, that 70s truck driver, oh, I'm, wearing, yeah. I'm wearing a vest. Hammer down. I'm wearing a vest that may have some goddamn patches on it. Come back, Teddy Bear. You love it. Hell, we used to we used to throw on the, the shortwave radio after the show. The CB? Whatever happened to that? Yeah. The FCC had a problem with that. Well, can we now, still do that? We can, no, uh, no. Yeah, we can. That's an antenna. That's the antenna right there. We should do a live thing right in the middle of the show. Um, Bring in. But I found this. Uh, somebody said, "Man, Mr. Did Wilson, looks like a looks like a Marlboro." Uh, yeah, what's going on in that cover? What the hell? It's like a ad from trying the to 70s. Push it through on the snow, it's snow bank or something. Forty miles of bad road. It's a compilation on um, on the uh, yeah, Gusto Records '79, which is perfect for that kind of vibe. We got some uh, Red Sovon, Dwayne Eddy, Coleman Dwayne Wilson. Eddie. Whoa, yeah, uh, Jimmy Griggs, Jack Scott. But the names of the songs is what's most important. Forty miles of bad road. Truck driver's prayer. Passing Zone Blues, Freightliner Fever, Crossing the Brazos at Waco, Phantom 309, Phantom. Overloaded Diesel, Wid so Widowmaker, Phantom. and Diesel Smoke on Danger Road. 309. Look at that, man. 40 miles of bad they road. Could, they could keep... When uh, I first saw this, I didn't know what it was. I thought it was a 10cc album. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> you, ruined it. you ruined it. You ruined my vibe with some 10 CC. No, I love 10 CC. But um, no, I don't. No, I don't. So don't Do I? forget it. I don't know. But I've got several of these, like those country compilations. It's funny how many there were that were straight up marketed toward truckers. I guess they sold them in truck Hey! Did they listen to them in the truck? Curvest! The record players in truck? Curvest! No, he left. He left? Yeah, he did the slip out. He brought up this guy's name, and I was trying to figure out where I heard it before. Who? It was on this record. Oh. I got this at that digging place. That digging Recently. It's, uh, it's Jeff Beck Group, Rough and Ready. Oh, I don't have that one. No, you don't. It's my favorite cartoon, This is though. a great fusion album. No, um, I think it's even got some vocals in it and stuff, but it's, it's still good. Jeff Beck, I think it's like early 70s. Hmm. Um, on Epic Records, or Epic, is the drummer is Cozy Powell. Oh, he talked about. He was asking us if we knew who Cozy, if we heard of Cozy Powell. I was like, Yeah, I've heard of him. I can't remember where, but uh, yeah. So this is the Jeff Beck group, and this is a really good record. And the Cozy Powell is that guy with the thin face in the middle, looks like Roger Waters kind of. Yeah, he does. What you see on the front is what you can see on the back. That's all so you where get. does this fall in the uh, Jeff Beck group? It's after Rod Stewart. I know that, which was the early. Are stuff. you thinking of like uh, Blow by Blow, Beckola? Oh, oh that's, not, it's, that's not the group. It's before that, it's all before that. Before that, it's before the solo work with just him jamming on the guitar. He's still doing vocals and stuff. It's Beckola, so, Jeff Beck group. Uh, Beckola, the nah, Apple, nah, Apple, nah, Apple, I don't remember. <laughs> This is from 1971. Mine's a 78. This is a 78 repress, by the way, so it's probably a lot cleaner than you would by have. By the seven. time you read these lines, I'll be gone. I got four more. How Life about, goes on. I got four, maybe five more. What do you got? I'll do one more. I'll do two more. I'm going to do two more. Um, next is a band that I've been getting into, trying to find more about, because I don't know much about them, because they weren't popular here, but I think they had a thing going on in Britain. Yeah. We're talking about Bebox Deluxe. The B, no. No? No. Um, no. This no. is the, the Modern Music it's album? It's got to be later. I want the one with the skull guitar on it. I've got that one. You got that? Yeah. Dude, I'll, I might talk some trade. Oh. You. We might have to talk some trade. Have you heard it? Yes. I've got it. Anyway, this is modern music. It's in my bees, everybody. <laughs> From um, in my 1976, <laughs> their fourth LP, British band. Uh, many cause this Prague, but it, it's kind of poppy Prague. What in year a way. is this? I'm sorry. 76. Oh, that's way earlier than I thought. Way earlier. Produced by Bill Nelson. So uh, I also got another B Box Deluxe record in the same little digging spot. Uh, best of and rest of uh, that one I box don't have. Deluxe. I don't have that one. It's a good one to have because it's got some some of their some of their compilation stuff, but it also has 
unreleased tracks and stuff that they'd done that they released in Britain, but they didn't release in the U.S. You know, I bought a lot of B-Box Deluxe, and um, speaking of VCLT from John, which I mentioned earlier with that Caravan, he sent the uh, some Bebop Deluxe uh, yes, he on did. Harvest. And these are both on Harvest. Yeah. And like I said, the second LP is previously unreleased material. And this one's from 78, the other 76. So we're glad to, uh, to pick those up to add. I think I now have three Bebop Deluxe. I have Dude, that's one. straight as hell. I love that shit. It's pretty straight. It's straight, man. It's straight. Okay, now I, give me some bigger items I picked up today. I know everybody's everybody's like energy is like just starting to start pick up. Picking up. Yeah. You know why? Cause I am the cold blooded sausage maker. What in the fuck? <laughs> what just happened? Um That's how I was gonna start the show, I think. Cold blooded sausage maker. <laughs> I am the cold blooded sausage maker. That conviction Look that up. Go look that up in your phone. Yeah, You'll see. Okay. Yeah. First person to text in what the hell he, that quote came from will get a piece of luggage. A piece of luggage. Not new, but... Brought to you by... What was that luggage company in Greensboro that everybody Samsonite. went to? Samsonite. Sharon Luggage and Gifts. Sharon Luggage. Thank you from very much. Sharon. That was hey, exactly we have a sponsor right. to talk about tonight. We should save it, though, shouldn't we? Until, so to speak, maybe. Yeah, we'll save it. We'll, we'll save, save it. it. we got a new sponsor tonight, y'all. I'm excited. We're excited about it. It's a big deal. Well, it's a so excited deal. we almost forgot about it. <laughs> yep. Soda excited. Soda excited. I don't like that one. Let's start. Let's roll that back. Three, One, two, two. one. All right. We got a, this is a record I've been looking for for a long time. Yes. Uh, it's part of the psychedelic experience of the 60s and 70s. Oh. This is a record that really uh, encapsulates that. Um, encapsulates? Like encapsulates. a gel cap? Gel cap. Uh, Nuggets, which Nuggets. you may know, is a oh. legendary compilation from 72, I believe. Um, and it's worth like uh, 1400 and It's one of those, one of those albums that has a little folklore behind it kind of thing. Absolutely. Now, this is different <laughs> in the fact that um, <coughs> Sorry. in the 80s. Uh, I was there. Yeah, yeah. It's a s series of compilation records. Series? That Electra released. So this is the first one out of 15, I think. Yeah, I have one of them, but not that one. But this is the one everybody wants. I want that one. If you're going to go that route, I mean, there's the ones in the 70s are very specific and probably better, but this includes a lot of those. And let's hold this guy up. Yeah, let's just hold it up. And so I can read this uh, in a little more comfortable. Nuggets is a series of compilation albums by Electric Records and continued by Rhino Records. Besides five box sets, 12 Vinyl only and three single CD albums were also released during the 1980s. And two new single CDs released in 2004. Name of the series is Take Off of the 72 LP uh, Nuggets Original Artifacts from the First Psychedelic Era, 65 through 68. Originally compiled by Lenny Kane and released on Electra. Music found on the Nuggets series is very similar to that of Kay's original compilation, meaning the songs. Uh, found on the Series 15 albums, appears on the Nuggets double LP, while others would be eventually uh, would wind up on the uh, Rhino box set expansion of K's compilations. Um, but the, I mean, so who's on here? Let's read it. And read it off, Steve. The Leaves, Hey Joe, Electric Prunes, Too Much to Dream, yeah. Five Americans, Standells, The Human Beings, The Blues Magoos, Bar The Barbarians, the Seeds, Pushing Too Hard, of course. The Music Machine, The Count Five, The Balloon Farm, The Naz. Which, you know, The Naz, I need to I need to listen to The Naz. You know, that's, uh, is that Todd Rudd here, maybe? I don't know. Some of those bands, I don't the know. The Amboy Dukes about. and Blue Cheer, Summertime Blues. Oh, uh, Blue you Cheer. You now have no. Summertime Blues. So. No, I don't. Well, you have it on here. No, I do on there. You don't have it on Invictus like I do, but... I want Invictus and more important, I want uh, Outside Inside yeah. or Inside Outside. Inside Blue outside Cheer, inside. that is like near the top of my list. Blue Cheer is such a great band, man. Such a great band. How many more you got? Three. I got two. Do one. I'll do one. We Steve. played, that's do just one. one we played earlier. Steve. It was, do it was what we played, but yeah. it was, I was ready for the show and the show wasn't ready, so I said, well, this is what I was going to play after the show. Sure. We went ahead and played it. Well, we played some of it. Uh, this is uh, a repress. I think it's a 30th anniversary uh, pressing that came out in 90s. 
When did it come no, out? It, it just no, it came out. A couple years ago. 2013, maybe? Yeah. No, it says 97. No. That one's from 97? I don't know, man. I, don't, it, it, I know they re released it. It was a released years in 68, so yeah, yeah, it's a 30th anniversary repre uh, repress that came out in 97. Oh, wow. And this Odyssey, well, that's different pressing than this. It's a Zombies, thing. Odyssey, and Oracle. Uh, great record. Now my, I think the one before it is even better. That is one of, if not the favorite, that is one of the favorite records of our very good friend Chris Brzezinski. Well, good. I'm glad we could uh, get our he hands on it. He recommended this album to me, and I listened to it on YouTube and fell in love with it. I've, I slept on picking up the record store day uh, press from just a couple of years ago. And you fell in love with him. Uh, yeah, I, I did. We're having to deal with that. He's totally bearable. The, the repercussions of all that. He said somebody commented on one of his uh, videos that he was unbearable. Unbearable? And I was like, dude, dude, that mean? dude you're totally bearable. Unbearable. Who says shit like that? What does that mean? I tell you who says shit like that is mean ass people on YouTube. With their gloves. And dickheads with their fingerless with their, gloves. With their that fucking leather fingerless band. gloves. God. Yeah. I hate, I hate that dude. I want to fight that dude. Let me I'll do fight that dude on pay-per-view. Oh my God! I would cause I would cause a scene. What you got? As they say on Wet Hot American Summer, I'll kill him and fuck him. I'll kill him and fuck him right in front of everybody. Have you ever heard the Cocksucker Blues by the Rolling Stones? No. What was that deal about? Uh, the the uh, '72 tour, and I was griping about this on Facebook. That the, there's a commercial out for Cuervo now. And it all talks about the, the, the Rolling Stones 72 tour. They're on a plane, and people pouring shots on the plane. You don't see the stones. Shots. You see a lot of sexy looking women. Cuervo, shots, what are we talking about? And, but they're playing on the music in the commercial is Miss You by the Rolling Stones, which, as everyone knows, is a disco song from the 70s, it's from 78. Yeah. It's like, why the fuck? You got a whole plethora of songs from the 72 tour sure. that you could easily play. That are more expensive. That are, that's probably what it is. That's probably They're what probably it like, is. oh, I really like the disco sound of this. I'm the, I'm the, I'm the producer and I don't, I don't understand the stones, but I, I, I know how to sell records. And yeah, I know how to sure. sell Cuervo shots. So, um, but anyway, I'm getting off track. Apparently, uh, our good friend at the station, um, Horace Pretense. No, he's a PA. He's a really cool guy. Jeff. No. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't. I don't know PA. I'm drawing names. blank. Anyway, he was telling me the story about this song. There's a song oh, out there. Oh, Bill. Bill. Yes, our Bill, our man, yeah. Bill the R, called Cocksucker Blues. It was just Mick and 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 and, and Keith. And, and they wrote this song about the tour, basically about um, how easy it was getting blown and getting fucked. And you know, this it's pretty pretty raw song that's out there. I think it's on maybe YouTube and look it up. But I'm I'm digressing totally from whatever the hell I was talking about. But I don't know where we're at. What do you got? I don't know what day of the week this we is. Two, you got two. I got two. I got two. Do one. You me do one. Do one. Dude, I finally bit the bullet on this one. And I have you to say that at the you, place I was at... That's a good, decent bullet, though. Undog, uh, underdog Records. Undog, I about <laughs> said. Um, been sleeping on this for the longest time. To be honest, I was kind of waiting for the trilogy on colored vinyl, and I was going to pull the trigger on that. But you know what? Such a great deal. The Melvin's reissues. Melvin Stoner Witch, which is... Um, God. It's... Probably my favorite Melvins. No, not probably. It's my favorite Melvins. And to me, a lot of people say if you're going to try to get into the Melvins, start with um, Houdini, which would have been like 93. This is like 94. Mm -hmm. To me, Stoner Witch would be uh, the most palpable. Have you opened that yet? I've not. We're going to do it right now. Um, we should probably put that on at the show, man. Yeah. You know, a lot of times with a lot of bands... When you think about, oh, this this album, oh, you don't like Frank Zappa? Listen to this one because this one is the most palpable for regular people. You think that's people. the one? That's, this is the one that'll bring them. To in. me, to, to me, that's normally the one. I'm like, no, shut the fuck up. I like the weird shit. I like the shit that's noise for so 25 minutes. So if someone told minutes. you they didn't like Zappa, you would would you tell them apostrophe is the one you should put on? What, what Probably. Would you tell them? Yeah. 
Sleep Dirt's another one. That's a good funky, just straightforward 4-4 four, four time and like four-minute songs all the way through. Right. Um, and normally I'm like, nah, man, nah. I like the weirdest shit of anybody can put right, out. Right, Blah, blah, blah. That's normally my steez. The Melvins, I love the weird shit, but I like the more straightforward, quote-unquote, palpable Melvins. Palpable. And to me, this is the most... If you want to get it... To me, this is a 90s grunge album must-have. And I'm popping this seal right now. Oh, I can smell it. It smells like a... It smells like a Turkish woman's vagina, Steve. It's got a gatefold. Nice gatefold this to it. Good. You're looking at this the first, as we look at it. And this is a Third Man. It's That's got the, nice. I yeah. like the Third Man label. The, and Jay, had, like Jay has... Um, Houdini and it sounds terrific. So I cannot wait to put this on because it's my favorite Melvin's. Get that now in there. I'll figure it out. Get that in there so I don't mess it up. Melvin's Stoner Witch. Dude, it, it's uh and it, it is more straightforward, uh grungy nineties, cause a uh, man. Anybody's a fan uh, fan of 90s grunge stuff. I'm not going to pull it out. I'm just going to put it on. So I'm yeah, gonna... don't pull it out. Put it on. That's what she said. And then she got preggers. What? Oh. <laughs> oh. Oh. Look who's talking now, John Travolta. Look I think who's your talking music, now. I think your music stopped playing. Did it? I think. I no, it's know. still going. Yeah, stuff's happening. I don't know. Shit. Shit. We're already over an hour. Let's get it going. Okay, I'm done. Still got no way, I've still got two records. No, I know. That's what I'm saying. We got to move. We got to move. All right. Your turn. My, I'm over here. So anyway. Uh, Microphone. Another great uh, prog record. I was really happy because I don't have any of these cats. LPs uh, is a Vandergraaff generator. Oh, whoa. I don't have any of that. And this is called... Butt ball cinema. Pawn hearts. I don't know that. What year is this? Vandergraaf Generator is a prog band. They're kind of out there. This is on Charisma. This is actually the first copy with the Charisma, the Charisma pink scroll label. I'm going to show it to you because it's kind of a cool label I've never seen before. On the labels and inner sleeve. This is from 1971 on Charisma. Hmm. The band is called the Vander Graaff Generator, and yeah. this is their really cool... Um, you know who's a fan of that band, Steve? Your dad. Derek. Charisma. Look at that cool scroll label. Derek likes this band. It's a good band. Because Derek likes them. That's not, why they're not a good band. because of Derek. Yes, Derek has no, nothing no. to do with the liking no, no, of this no. band. No, no, no. <laughs> no, no, no. No, no, Derek no. Derek SOA. This is a good good record. Uh, because Derek's I was hoping to pick SOA. up another Vandergraaf, which a friend of our, our, our underdog. The guy's just come across a bunch of good used records lately. Well, they're flying off and the he, shelf. And he had though. a Vandergraaf, and I had no idea when he when it came in, so it flew out before I even knew about it. But the other one that I got from him didn't fly out, and I was able to pick it up. And I'm gonna tell you about it right now, and then I'll let you do your last record. Okay, so, do it, do um, it, dude. The other day I was going to shoot something at a, at a, at a city park. Uh, to, for a commercial I was trying to finish. And as I was driving, I was just, you know, as I got, I'm oh, sorry, let me revise that. I wasn't driving. As I got no, to the place I was going and I, I just pulled up on Facebook, uh, Underdog's Facebook page to see what's going on over at oh. Underdog. I like to check it once now and then. I should check it more often. In fact, I checked it and the day before at five o'clock he had posted that he had this record and I, oh. I was like, shit. I can't believe I waited this long before checking on it. So I called him. I said, hey, is there any chance you still have this record? And he goes, I do have this record. I said, oh, well, I'm just right down the hill. I, honestly, if you rolled a, rock, a ball, it would go down the hill from where it was. It was right up the hill from, uh, from the, the park. And I was like, listen, I'm shooting this kid kicking a soccer ball. As soon as I get done, it'll take about I 10 minutes. I shot a kid shooting a soccer ball today. Me too. Yeah. And I, I'll... Uh, ten minutes, I'll run up and I'll get it. Can you hold it for me? And Somebody bear me? I don't think... Uh, he's not big into holding stuff. He doesn't like to hold. And I, I appreciate him for that. 
So he's, I could tell in his voice, he's like, well, okay, if you could hurry. And I was like, okay. So I was sitting there unloading. I was like, you know what? I got five minutes. So I just threw it in the car, drove up the hill, ran in, and he told me the story of all the records he had. And I was like, oh, I wish I could stay and look and see what you got. But um, I was able to Word pick up. up. And recently, I, I already have a reissue of this that came out this year, these early Pink Floyd records. And this yeah. is Piper at the Gates of Dawn. It's a UK pressing. It is actually a, an interesting pressing that you don't see a lot of. It's in, it's in, it's in its original shrink wrap. But this is like a late 70s, early 80s. The British, it's the tan, sorry, British, what am I saying? Uh, it's the tan Columbia label, which I don't really see a lot about, even on a guy who owns a lot of, uh, I was yeah, checking yeah, out I don't site, and I don't ever see this really. I don't know what the deal Columbia with that label is. Label. It's not a promo label. It's just, I think it's the late 70s, early 80s. I think um, it's a Vietnamese bootleg. It's not. It's a UK press. No, we're talking about Vietnamese uh, bootlegs. It's a Vietnamese bootleg. But I recently bought this, and the reissue sounds wonderful and amazing, but I was really happy this is in such good shape. I really had trouble. I couldn't pass it up, and I felt uh -huh. guilty. This shows... To me, it, to me, it shows my addiction to vinyl, and the, the, there are certain records, are, are, for you, are there certain records that you would, you would pay for to add to your collection, even though you might have another copy of it? Thrift stores? Absolutely. There's yeah. certain records that I... But I, I already paid, like, I you know. won't let uh, the idea of somebody throwing this away or becoming discarded, I would rather buy it for a buck and give it so away. I listen to it and I think now yeah. now that I have the repress, I'll probably put this away and not listen to it so, well, since so you, much. Since you have two copies now. <laughs> so, well, sure. Uh, yeah. yeah. There's no reason I should own it. Touchdown. <laughs> um, that's, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, I told John, I was like, yes, yeah, so, Steve told me he bought that copy of Pink Floyd. He's like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so like, then I had to go and collect from some people that owe me money so I could justify the fact that I've, that's how I've it bought works. two of the same record in now the you past. You find five that's records right. that you have that's actually worth a little bit. You put them on eBay or Discogs and just get rid of them and make up for the difference. I could do that. Yeah. That, that's what keeps me in comfort is that I know I can do that, but I'll never do that. Let's yeah, be you you won't sell it, and I won't either. No, hey, the final record I picked up today is um, not the most expensive or anything, but it's uh, it Frank Zappa and the Mother's Invention, one size fits all. It says VG, but it's not VG. It sounds great. Um, and uh, it's like a I'll Zodiac thing going on here. Man, I'll tell you what. It's a cool cover. Do you know yeah. what year this came out? Yeah, it's '75, and actually, this is the last. Mothers of Invention album. Apparently, they promised a quadraphonic version. Really, this is their last that never came out. Yeah, um, what features what? the summer fall lineup of 70, 74 of Mothers of Invention. It's got George Duke, Chester Thompson, Ruth Underwood, Tom Fowler, Napoleon Murphy. Tom Brock. Fowler, I know that guy. Um, I've been to his house. Album features one of Zappa's most complex tracks, Inca Road. One of Zappa's uh, heroes, Johnny Guitar Watson. Guest on two tracks, so this actually has Johnny, Johnny Guitar, Guitar Watson plays on here. Yeah, who Flambe is? vocals on the out choruses of San Bernardino and Andy. Captain Beefheart also appears using a sen uh, under a synonym. It's on Discreet. Have you ever seen this label before? Yeah, I've got yeah a lot of Zappa has that Discreet. Does it? Yeah. Um, but wow, it's in really good shape. It's another one that I'm adding Dang. to the, the Zappa Mothers uh, collection, man. I will and uh, it. I put he listed this as VG and I put it on headphones. Dude, this looks like it's in immaculate condition. That's what I'm saying. Dude, be saying stuff's messed up and it ain't really well, messed up. Yeah, you I go. appreciate him for it. I appreciate the hell out of him for it. I appreciate the hell out of you. That's yeah. all we got. That's all we done the last yeah. six months. That's all we've been doing. Um, I can't wait to hear that because I listened to some of those. And speaking of palpable records. Certainly some Zappa records are not necessarily, and Mothers specifically, 
are not specifically nece not necessarily for everybody. No, it's like listening to a Phantomos record. I mean, you got to kind of you can go listen to the Dixie Chicks if that's what you need to do. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, but this one, I, I noticed as I was looking through the thing, I was like, "Is this a live?" I was like, "No, this is not a live." Uh, and, and I was breaking down the track, and all the tracks were like four minutes, three minutes, two minutes, four minutes, and I'm like, "Okay," because sometimes you'll have like one whole side of a Zappa record. Is one song, one song called like Chicken Dick Special. Yeah. And you know it's going to be some good stuff mixed with some bullshit. <laughs> um, you know, I mean, good bullshit, but let's be honest, bullshit. It's like Jimi Hendrix could do the same thing. One whole side of an album is called Dick Off Surprise, and it's just him messing around. Uh, this one was all like broke up into like individual songs and uh, I was really excited about it and I just kind of hop hop hopped God. around and sampled so it many was great good records well I mean we played some great records so many good records hey so, I tell you what hard to decide. you have so many good records hard to decide what you're going to play that's what I'm saying so that's why we're going to take a quick break catch our damn breath and we'll be right back to spell the spell is cast speak and spell from texas instruments that is correct with snap-in modules with hundreds more words for growing minds you are right speak and spell part of a family of products for richer tomorrows from the learning center of texas instruments Shh. because a child's tomorrow is never just if you own ColecoVision, you already own a powerful state-of-the-art computer that gives you the arcade experience with the newest arcade games like Donkey Kong Jr., Looping, Pepper 2, Time Pilot, Mr. Do, Space Fury, Frontline, arcade controls like Turbo, the Roller Controller, and new Super Action Sports. And soon you'll plug in Atom, the revolutionary ColecoVision family computer module with new super games, keyboard, and printer. ColecoVision, the only system you'll ever need. You know, a lot of people think I have the best seat in the house. No way. The best seat in the house is right here. Cheering on the Cubs with the greatest fans in the world and the greatest beer in the world, Budweiser. Yeah, nothing quenches a Cub fan's thirst for victory quite like the king of beer. Oh, yeah. here comes another one. Cub fans, this bug's for you. Wow. Everybody, thanks for staying with us. And that last commercial was special, which is why I'm wearing my Ron Sandberg jersey. Oh, Lord. Cubs clinched last night. That's amazing. i got to say that is amazing that it's they, amazing they have the clinched clinch. as early as they have. Of course, the teams in the Central are so bad. Uh, well, I'll tell you what, man. Postseason scared me hell out of me yeah, don't, already. Don't, yeah, don't get on your laurels no, too no, high. No. You gotta stay. You gotta stay And hungry. I'm not talking shit. And they, we're gonna do this. And we're gonna do way, that. I'll pull for them. They gotta find a way to stay hungry. But imagine this. I'm just throwing this out there, and I talked about this before. You know, me and Cameron went up there, and we saw him a few weeks ago on vacation. What if I got to see him the the year that they won it? 
Huh? That's good. I don't even want to. I don't even want to talk That's about it. a good it. thing. I don't even want to talk about it. Let's do so to speak, man. Uh, I brought a soda. You brought a soda for us to do. I brought a kind of a weird one. This is a weirdo guy. It, it makes me think about my grandma. Oh, I think about your grandma all the time. You never Steve. met my grandma. She's a beautiful lady. She was a beautiful lady, she Lucy a, Lucy Bunger. Amazing woman. But you know what? She, one thing she made Strong pies. Woman. She can make bread. She can make whatever. But yeah. she made pies. I like a pie. And she had a great strawberry patch. Beautiful strawberry patch. But she I also feel had, like this is all inappropriate. She also had rhubarb on her farm, and a nice patch of rhubarb. And she would make a strawberry rhubarb pie that would you would die for. Well, I found a strawberry rhubarb soda. Whoa. It's an organic. It's called Ugave, and it's made with uh, agave. Agave. We've been drinking agave already. So oh, oh geez, agave. Let's just keep drinking agave. Uh, strawberry rhubarb. Yeah, yeah okay. Uh, so we're going to check it out. We're going to try Books. it. Books. Rocky Mountain out. Soda Company, Denver, Colorado. It's got weed in it, bro. They all, 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 all that weed Certified in it. Certified organic by the... Colorado Department of Agriculture. Because of all that weed, bro. It says great ingredients. Let's see what it says. Yeah. Tri triple filtered carbonated water, organic agave nectar, citric acid, and natural flavors. That's and all weed. And apparently <laughs> it's going to taste like strawberry rhubarb pie. And weed. So this goes out to Lucy Bunger, my grandma. Yeah. Who no longer is with us. She went on to get a reward, man. That's all right. Grab your reward as soon as you can get it, is what I say. All, All right. right. Fill that boat. No, that's good. Smell that. It's not It's not too sweet. I thought it was going to be really syrupy, sweet, kind of over the top. It is a good damn soda. <laughs> it's, it, I can f it's got no. a lot of flavor to it. No, that's a great damn soda. You got to try this. That's good. Wow. I got that. At, I think I got that at Rocket Fizz, the same place where I get all those weird, stupid sodas. Right. Uh, but that one, I got to say. That one may be up there, soda of the year. Soda of the year? I'm is there such a thing? I've not mentioned that, but that that's. That may be the most refreshing soda. That is. Like, refreshing. That's a good summertime soda right there. Just really Oh, that's any time. So I got a shout out to the Ugave. That is a well, good. Send them the message. We'll send them a link to this program and say, hey, look, we reviewed your message and we put it on our TV website. Check it out, strawberry rhubarb. What part of that is the rhubarb? What part of that the, the, the sour, the, the, the little sour bite. Mm. Rhubarb has a little bit of a sour bite to it. It's like, a tuber. I like that. It's a tuber. Almost like a little bit of a lemon. I've seen recipes where they do rhubarbs with potatoes. Is that rhubarb something is, I would like? Because rhubarb is a potato. I mean, rhubarb is uh, hard to get. It's only, it's only available at a certain time of the year, you know, and you really got to jump on It's like celery's fruit cousin, you know? But you have to get them on a boat. <laughs> Do you have something to I say on I've this? Actually, I've never even held one. Of them. You, you, know, you want rhubarb? I don't think I've you got to have a boat, boat to get them. Do you have a boat? Yeah. You don't have to have a boat. No, you got to have a boat. With it's, one a of celery, those it's like a no, celery. It's a red it's celery boat stock. Basket. It's a boat, a boat basket. You hang a basket <laughs> off the side of a boat. And you, you idle by it. You can't, you can't speed you can't by it. You can't go too fast. No, you'll break your basket. You idle past it. You drop your uh, basket. Shoot! Shoot! Basket. Basket. Shoop. You shoot it up. Shoot! Uh, there it is. Shoot! Shoot! There it is. That's what that TLC song was about. That's a great soda. Shoot! You get it right up there. Nice. Yeah, that's a good soda. Though. That. Woo! Shoot! You scoop it all right on. Scoop, on. Out. scoop it all up. Out. No, all the big bulbous um, areas of all that that we need. Let's do a chip chat. Okay, why not? Well, why not? We're here already. I think we're going to do a couple of them Let's tonight. do, we're going to do two chips? We try to do one tonight because, you know, you don't want to run out of chips. But lately we've been kind of bringing the chips in. Who are you going and to? And we've been bringing so many chips in that the dates are getting kind of on up there. I don't want them to go stale the, on us. The dates, the almond, the prunes, all of them. <laughs> there you go. So I brought, I brought this in okay. from somewhere. That's I it. don't remember where. But it was one of those places that, that caters to a Hispanic market. Okay. Uh, uh, honestly, that's what it was. That's, uh, is that relevant? Sorry. Is that relevant? Maybe the migrant cucumber pickers in eastern, uh, west, uh, western uh, North Carolina. No. This is the... I'm going to build a wall around these chips. Sabrita's label, which is a Frito-Lay, makes a little label, a sub-label of Frito-Lay. No. 
that where you get your little rolled corn products. This is the Sabritas. And we're talking the Doritos. Of course, everyone knows Doritos. Flamas. Yeah. Which I think I'm going to predict right now. Put we them in here. Put them in here. We haven't done these? No. Is that the wall? Yeah, I built a wall around them. <laughs> we'll put a wall around them. I'm going to predict right now this is going to taste a lot like all the other hot products they come up with lately. Dinamitos. It's that same red hot dust and they just throw it on different chips. This yeah. is the Doritos version. Super hot with some lime on it. Yeah, let's just see what it says. Ya llego. Dile hola a Doritos Flamas. No, I took the German. I took German. The first, uh, this is total. Do this mine sofa? I got gotcha. you. Uh, okay, Doritos same color. Flamas. It's the stainers. It's the green bag. If, you, if you've done the Dinomitas, it's the green bag that stains your fingers really bad. So it's looking like that. Yeah, totally. And it's fed fucked up. They're just not rolled up. They're just rolling flat. I love this chip. I love the dinamitas. I, the problem is this is the red stain, but yeah, if you can deal with that. Well, it comes with dating the JV cheerleader. You will need something to drink because these are these are rather spicy. They're very spicy. I really dig that. It's lime got a lime taste. It got a lime aftertaste, but it's got a hot, hot, kind of peppery uh, frontal taste. It's, it's actually a little bit, but a little it's a bit too much. But it's a fake lime. And that's what bothers me, probably more than the heat. I think the heat is a little bit too much. I could get down with that, but it's that citric acid, not lime. You know what I mean? Mm, yeah. Just powder. That's well, a chemical it thing. Says, what it says here, it says, including nat nat natural extratives of red pepper and natural extratives of lime. Oh, it includes it. And really, those are the two major powers that you're feeling is that it's red pepper no, and no, lime. No, it includes it, but it's not exclusive to those flavors. It's too hot. I don't even want any more of those. If I had a whole bag, I would stop eating right now. Okay. Too much. I like it. But it is it is really in your face. I don't you, mind you, that. You can't just sit here. A cold pop. beer? I don't mind that. Cold, you got to have a cold beverage to go with this. Actually, one, one positive about it is it makes you drink your beer faster. We showed it, but I'm going to show you the chip because it's down covered, totally covered in salt, uh, pepper, and uh, it's really red. You know, my parents are uh, making a lot of eggs here lately. It's your parents? And um, my mama. mom's really good at making pickles, but they got a lot of eggs, so I said they should do some pickled eggs. Oh, my God. Yeah. Right? Where are they? Yeah. All over the place. When did you tell her that? Yes, sir. We're uh, going to do two chips tonight. Been a week, sure. What do you know about this? Oh, now, a good buddy of the program, Abigail, just came back from Canterbury. Speaking of, um, we played some caravan, caravan earlier of the Canterbury scene. Uh, the, we did some Walker's chips, which is, they're in cahoots with Lay's. Frito-Lay bought them. They're yeah. not in cahoots. Frito-Lay just said, you yeah. guys are good. Yeah, Frito-Lay we'll buy them. you. Here's some money. Go away. So the, uh, one of the, what would be a Lay's type flavor in England? Sausage and brown sauce. Oh, yeah. And I don't know what this means. Somebody hold this up. Oh, oh yeah. Look at the picture on there before we open these mug frogs up. It looks like a... What a do they mean by sausage? What do they mean by brown sauce? Well, it, I see I see some sausage that are cut in half, and there's brown sauce drizzled on top, and it looks like it's between a multigrain bun. Or a multigrain, one of those little half buns, so you're not getting too much carbs, but whatever, dude. I'm looking at a half bun, but it's, it's a, wa a chip that Walker's label totally looks like a Frito Lay thing, right? Look at that. Totally. Frito yeah. Lay. Now those the ones we did the last time, the Worcestershire and Cheddar, were phenomenal. They are offering ten thousand pounds every week, by the way. Ha ha ha. Why would you offer a weight of measurement for Okay. HP by the way, this is HP sauce, which Probably some really good brand of sauce oh, in, the, yeah, in, in the England yeah, area. Yeah, HP is a thing. I've heard that. HP? I still don't understand brown sauce. Yeah, you want to try these, uh, Ryan? Uh, cameraman, there's some brown sauce chips right here. Sausage and brown sauce. Okay. So here let's we see go. what this is all about. What do you okay. think about it? Mmm. Mmm. Like a Worcestershire. They love that because that was the other one we did. Mmm. You taste sausage? A Maybe. little bit. Maybe. Yeah. It's all there. 
totally different from what we just had. Tangy. The flamas. This is a tangy kind of sweet. That's weird. Very hard to nail down. That's weird. Right? Not weird, bad, but like, no. what is that flavor? Is it not weird? I normally thought Worcestershire, but then it went away. Is it too much. artificial? Yeah. Too much tang. Too much tang. I'm going to give it one more. But they're good. It is good. They're good. It's just weird. It's nowhere. Now, I think this is good with a George Shearing record. Oh. Now, the other uh, chip we did from this company, that Cheddar Worcestershire, way better than this. Yeah. But these are not bad. We got one more from them. We'll talk about it later. Really? I think so. No, I don't think so. Ham and mustard. Yeah, we do. Really? Yeah, well, yeah we oh, do. Oh, shit. Yeah, we do. Deep teas. Deep teas. In your mama. We call it a deep teas. In your mama. Um, all right. Thanks for joining us for Grown Man Record Night. We appreciate everybody joining us on the live program. Keep up with all our bullshit on the uh, on the Facebook uh, page where we uh, update things from time to time. Baseball. Day to day, time to time. Keep up with our family. Because we love you. God, we love you. I, I didn't tell you this, but yeah. after the show, last week, we did a Saturday show. Yeah. Sunday morning, I get up, I go to church, and I sing, but yeah. I leave early because I, I wanted to get to Greensboro to see. They had the, the yeah. in Greensboro, they had the, the North Carolina Folk Festival. Oh, Cherry And Cole. at the Folk Festival, they had performers from... Vietnam, they're called the Montagnard. Um, I shot that guy. Another guy. Well, the Montagnards happen to be the folk that my father spent a lot of time with in Vietnam. They're the mountain. Montagnard is French for mountain mm -hmm. people or whatever. And they're, they're the indigenous mountain people, tribal people of Vietnam, mm -hmm. the central highlands of Vietnam. And they're resistance fighters and they're, they became refugees. And we, we brought a few thousand back with us. And outside of and I didn't know this and I wish I'd known this while dad was still alive but outside of Vietnam the largest population of Montagnards is actually in Greensboro Greensboro yeah it's a and big they, deal. they actually have a farm area down in Asheboro um, I'm thinking about getting involved with them in some way to see what I can do just so I can connect you know just to give me a connection so um, was really happy to go and see the, uh, some performance of some of their uh, folk instruments, which is it looks bizarre. like a hammock. Yeah, there was a hammock-looking thing. There was yeah. this weird instrument the guy was playing. It sounded yeah. like sounded like fucking traffic, like yeah. 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 really yeah. short, really yeah. short, sucky. Yeah. Amazing, amazing yeah. stuff. And then then the girls would get up and dance and do like I could tell the song was like a, a Vietnamese version of of uh, George Michael's Careless Whisper, and they're really into stuff like that. I made a couple is, of those girls yeah. really uncomfortable. Okay, good for you. We'll leave it at that. What are we drink? What is this little snack? It tastes soda-ish. Cherry Coke. Hey, there was a soda thing we were going to talk about. Oh, I know our sponsor. Let's not forget our sponsor. Our sponsor. But I know our time's short, but we got to talk about our sponsor. There's one in the fridge. No, bring the whole case. No, bring the case. We got a sponsor on the program. We're going, we're we got to give a shout out to our new. No, this case. No, that's a soda spoon. Mm -hmm. We're gonna drink, motherfucker. Our rock star. Yeah, look at that now. I mean, if you're feeling like you need a little bit more to get yeah. you going. I always feel like I need a little bit more. You In this a, program, a one, dude? you gotta really stay. I got you, one right here. You got one scar. We're talking rock star. And tonight we're talking rock star pure zero. This is a zero calorie lemonade with 240 milligrams of caffeine. Yeah, that's no that's no joke. This is what I drink in the morning. And they, they taste great. With B vitamins and taurine and caffeine. Bull semen and B honey. So I got to say that uh, my life has uh, really turned around ever since I discovered Rockstar. And that's what I'm saying. All right, did we cover it? When I we, get up. Did we say what we needed to say about it? When I get up. I feel like I'm ready to go now. Yeah. Instead of not feeling that way. Yeah. Which is what it felt like before. And our president was born in the United States, I think. It's like the difference between like 
having blast processing and like not having blast processing or or having Are these Sega Genesis jokes do anything for anybody no. having pockets and not having pockets in your yeah. colon yeah in your colon <laughs> diverticulitis it's as topical as it gets folks and here is where we bring you the up-to-date most current medical uh, humor like diverticulitis tavi or something yeah I'm, I'm tired. I'm tired of the show already. Yeah, let's go. So thanks for joining us for Grown Man Record Night, where we come and had a good time this evening. Uh, keep up with us on the YouTube and the Facebook. Thanks for uh, Cameron, girlfriend, Jed Kerbis, uh, Steve Fever, and Mikey Banana. We appreciate we'll you. you we time. appreciate you hanging out with us. Tonight. We may have a show next week. Hell, I don't know. There's always candidates. I ain't coming. got no records by now. I, I I've showed you everything that I ever owned. That's what uh, Jerry Mather said, and then he said, oh, also, I have diabetes. You, did you know I took a shit right next to Jerry Mathers at this TV station? He signed a thing for me. We were, we were shitting said, right next to each other. Said, we, didn't, we didn't touch foot or nothing, but did his say, I, was, uh, I was dropping a deuce, and the dude was right next to me. What did he smell like? And I said, yeah, what did he smell like? <laughs> and I said, I love your show. I love your show. <laughs> I love your show. Thanks for joining us, Grown America Night. We'll catch you next week. Love you, bro. Man, we love you.